But you're gonna make me do it too. Like I'm gonna say it now. I can hear you. <laughs> it's gonna happen. I know. I can hear you. Good morning, New Eden. Today is September 3rd, 2023, and this is the Federation Frontline Report. Today we are going to be interviewing uh, Tuan Molinar, who is running for CSM. And uh, let's uh, go ahead and just get a little round in here. So we've got uh, Gwenevic Kenyon with us. That's uh, Samson, who is running, or who is uh, my co-host here. Is, how are you doing this uh, fine weekend? Good morning, New Eat. I'm doing just fine, Frozen. <laughs> And uh, we also have Night Flyer here, who is also another co-host here on the show. How hey, doing, good morning, everybody. I'm doing great. I uh, appreciate everybody tuning in for this very special update uh, broadcast that we're doing. Yeah, so this is, uh, we're running here a uh, good little uh, CSM interview. So, Tuan, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming on to the enemy. Well, not really enemies anymore. We're not at war with each other. You're no, we're, we're friendly now. Right? So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we're friendlies now. We're all friendlies, frenemies. Let's put it that way. Right. <laughs> and uh, so you uh, are part of the uh, Amar Militia Dot, and uh, yeah. also the Red Sky Morning Corporation. Yeah. Correct. That's where I've been uh, living for the last uh, last year and a half. Awesome. So, uh, so running for CSM, um, CSM. Yeah, I got that right. See, I did it like twice. I got it right. I know. We're I really want to drink. drink. I'm gonna, we have to drink if, uh, if I say CMS. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. So, tell us a little bit. Uh, how did you get involved in um, Eve Online in general? What what got you into this crazy game? Um. I mean, I started playing in 2012, 2013, uh, and I actually started out as a faction of warfare noob in Galente space. I used to uh, live in Kadama and uh, and in Nisua. Um, I think I lived there for about two and a half years, three years, trying to get my grasp in the game, playing here and there, and burning out because I had no clue what the fuck I was doing. Like a few weeks ago, I went back on my uh, killboard of my first character all the way to the back. And I remember, oh my god, I made this nice fit. It was an exec cure with small blasters and six 400 millimeter armor plates. And I thought back then, I will, I, that was the best I could make. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I, I, I lived there for, for quite some time. And I started, the, you know, started getting better at the game. And then at some point, I moved up to Nullsec and I joined up with Gigax in the Circle of Two, uh, where I also stayed for the better of three, four years. Went through quite a bit of wars as FC, had a lot of fun, and then I uh, took a break for a solid year and a half, and after which I came back trying to find my uh, my foothold, and I started out again in uh, in the Black Rice area again, trying to find my grooves, but at the time I couldn't really find a corp that suited me. So I started looking at the Mimitar Amar Mill war zone, and then I, I ended up with uh, Red Sky Morning, and I've been with them since. So how long have you been back in Faction Warfare now? When when did you come back, or when did you join up with the Amar? I guess. Uh, about seven months before the the new FW patch hit. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, I I enjoyed the old system as well. Uh, the new system is a lot better, of course. But uh, yeah, so seven months before that patch so we uh, we worked towards it and then when the patch dropped i uh, i stayed with it and uh currently also one of the main fleet commanders in the amar militia itself and uh trying to fight mimil wherever we can so yeah what do you think of uh, you said that you, th you thought it was an improvement what do you think overall of the uh new changes uh any any specific comments that you have about uh what they did to faction warfare I hate yeah, to interrupt I really quick, yeah. Frozen, but uh, his name is misspelled on our lower third. Could oh, you really? change the T at the end to an R? I want to make oh, sure he's yeah. represented uh, properly. I would have oh. messaged you, but I realized you probably can't look at your messages anyway. No, I can't. I can't look at the messages. <laughs> yeah, right so now. it's mole and That's, R. Just yeah. change that T to a R, not a T. Yeah. That's what People are filling out their vote cards. They, uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna be like, this guy got like, got written in. Last I can't find him. I can't <laughs> find him. 
Yeah. There we go. Now we've got that correct. <coughs> Thank you for Sorry pointing about that. that out. No, perfect. <laughs> No, but I think in in general the uh, the dynamic of the war zone and uh, teamwork between the corporations and the alliances that fight together, you, you really have to work together now to to get things done. Whereas in the old system, you could take twenty people, stick them into punishers, just run all the novices, run all the smalls, and ignore all the larger plexes and just focus on cheap frigates and keep. And you could flip a system within uh, within a, a weekend. Yeah, it was uh, like a day or two you could really Yeah, a day or two and, and then you could you could flip a systems by just running novices and smalls and you know you didn't have to care about the mediums and the larges, you just kept because they were all zero point seven anyway, regardless. Mm -hmm. And I think now that the smaller plexes are worthless, I think it also in encourages more and more the use of big ships and, and bigger fleets and actually working together to to achieve a goal. And I think the advantage system that they added also uh, improves that because you know you need to pre-plan how you're going to siege a system. Do you gonna are you gonna focus on advantage first or are you just gonna go head first? And I think in general it just changed the tactics you you need to run to actually flip a system. And if you're not working together, you're not gonna get anything done. And we struggled quite a bit ourselves at the start to uh, to get everybody rallied and actually start pushing systems. Yeah, what do you think of the uh, the battlefield um, edition? I think the battlefields at the start, I think they were just not fun uh, in that regard when they just just added them. The VP points were way too high, uh, the advantage bonus was way too high, and uh, I think now that they've rebalanced them a few times, I think they're now in a pretty good pretty good place the only thing i would really like to see change is that they uh, lower the reward on it and increase the number behind it from 30 to like 50 60 and then reduce the reward uh, to like 75 to 80 thousand because what i see myself right now is that uh, minimitar and also amar a lot of people only untuck for the battlefield fleets to get their 150k lp and then log off again Mm -hmm. So I think in general, by increasing the amount of people that actually get full reward and lowering the reward itself, um, it's still going to be important to run them, but you're also going to make it less of people's main income and just balance it out with, with the rest of the plexes that are currently in the game. Yeah, definitely. I like that. I, that's a good... Uh good change i think uh, i haven't even never i haven't heard that suggestion at, at all or anybody talking about that but yeah i think that that actually is a, a decent change that could be made to that um what do you think of the uh like the the current mechanics that we use inside of uh the, the battlefields by just having it so that you leave a battle cruiser let it kite in yeah. the center um you know i'm a person that doesn't like sitting still especially when there's nothing happening like you know if the hostiles don't show up. It is so nice to just let the battle cruiser sit there and just be done in 30 minutes. Mm. But I do think it defeats the purpose of it being called a battlefield. So I do think that that battle cruiser should not be orbiting. I don't mind that it does, because it you know saves me a lot of time when running a fleet for a battlefield. But I think in general, the goal of them was to make it a battlefield. So if you just have to kill two waves of rats, wait for the battle cruiser and keep it running. I think it kind of defeats the purpose of what it does and I think it should just be like the rendezvous and the listening post just endless waves of uh, rats that you have to kill and well let the battlefield take approximately 30 45 minutes by default by just having endless respawns and actually have not smaller the groups. timer yeah and actually having smaller groups on each point that you and maybe increase the the spawn times between the waves a bit because I do notice that if you kill a wave now it's literally like 30 seconds before you get the next one so perhaps they remove that battle cruiser orbiting but they do increase the wave time so that once you do clear the entire wave it cycles for like a minute instead of uh, 30 seconds 20 seconds and then just you know keep balance it out a bit because right now it just does feel really still when you're fleeting in one hostiles don't show up you're just sitting there for 30 minutes watching the battle cruiser go circle after circle yeah and if there's no if there's no opposing um, faction, then it's just it's kind of boring. It is kind of boring, and then in, in that occasion, it is nice that you're just watching the battle cruiser orbit and see the timer tick up quickly. But I think it's not really how you know the battlefield should be intended. I know a lot of people are going to say, "Tuan, what the fuck are you saying? Don't <laughs> don't tell them that." But you know that's just my per that's just my personal opinion. 
could be a I little bit more engaging. I, yeah, and I think yeah. one of the things though is that there, At the very least, there is a balance in faction warfare with the activities that happen in it. That how much are you having to focus on PVE, and how much are you yeah. having to focus on you know getting ready for or preparing for PVP. PvP. Um, yeah, exactly. And it is yeah. kind of in that spot right now where you know you have a, you have, you have like a thing you need to do for your PVE, but it's not that hard. Get it down to one battle cruiser and yeah. make it orbit one dude who's orbiting the the, the button at very close. Yeah, and, and, and send one hobgoblin. <laughs> right, you know, and you, you've got uh, got one, you know, you got three people basically that are that are focused on doing that PVE activity that you can kind of set up, or maybe a little bit more if you. If Lodgy or something like that. You don't have the, the the main guy being able to handle the rats by themselves or whatever. But but then the rest of the fleet can all focus on that PVP. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting you know player uh, devised like mechanic that we we built up around it so that we could focus more on on the PVP aspect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah and exactly. we're getting a lot of Amar victories here. Welcome Amar to the <laughs> Federation Frontline Report. Thank you. For Welcome slavers. Checking this oh, out. Oh, I'm sorry. And uh, nice Canuck Down Under is always around. Like, yeah, he's he always our, Canuck's uh, always on our channel. On our channel. Like I don't shit. think he's on right now. I didn't see a post from him. Yet. We got a lot. We got a lot of Amarians that are coming out for you today. Look at this. We got 40 people watching. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think somebody found the stream and just linked Ooh. it in the in the fleet I'm in. So everybody. There we go. <laughs> oh, welcome, welcome. Fleet. Okay. Welcome, um, welcome. We love you. How do you Thanks feel about you. the uh, offense and defensive? Uh, aspect of the um, the battlefield that it's no different if it's an offense or defense except for the reward that you get. Um, yeah, I've, in my opinion, they should just uh, level out the rewards for either side because um, you know you have to tick down the same fifty percent. You still have to kill the same rats to actually get the timer ticker, so you, it still takes a, takes up the same time. Uh, to run it, so in my opinion, it should be that defensive and offensive to give the boat the same rewards, essentially, so that you are not forced to go sit in the battlefield and run it just so the other side doesn't. Well, it also it encourages the other side not to be interested at all. Like, oh, it's at you know three percent contested. I get nothing for running the battlefield. Yeah, so why finish it? So why why even yeah why even contest it? Why you know unless you're yeah, looking exactly. just for the PVP aspect of it, which you know definitely is an encouragement. You know, oh, there's a bunch of dudes that we can form up against and try and fight. Um, yeah. Have you noticed a lot in in uh, the battlefields the opportunity for small groups to come in to a larger group and just decimate? Um, because I see that a lot where like, you know, a pirate group or a small group will come in organized and then there's, you know, 20, 30 disorganized, you know, militia guys, you know, half of them not on comms, you know, like. I, I must say we, we don't actually, uh, both Amar Mill and Min Mill, uh, we seem to mostly form uh, properly for the battlefields. So usually we're either in their induction or a semi-organized uh, kitchen sink. So we'll always at least have a certain certain ship type that is there. That even if those guys come in, um, they're going to be discouraged to come in. What we mostly occur is that they're going to be camping outside the battlefield with mm -hmm. maledictions, garrises, and uh, just try to pirates catch like these to stragglers. Yeah, the pirates like to do that, and they just they just wait for stragglers to not uh, to not join comms and uh, <laughs> yep. tackle them. And then the funny part is that once they get tackled, they suddenly know their ways to come very fast, and then they start yelling that they need help. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, so we don't really have issues inside the battlefields itself. Usually it's just Min Mill versus Amar Mill. I mean, mostly pirate groups and things don't punch in. They usually just stick to the outside. There's a lot, there's a lot. I think like maybe there's more, um, maybe there's more pirate activity in, in Gal, Cal. We definitely have. I mean, we've got Tama nearby and stuff like that. Uh, uh, yeah. Sure. Well, it's Black Rise. It's Black, Black Rise. Rise is uh, very contested with a lot of pirates and stuff. But uh, yeah, definitely, um, it's uh, interesting because yeah, it, I think we've been getting better at it lately. But man, I, well, I just see so many times that like, you know, we get hired now to do it. Well, so. that too. But uh, fifteen, <laughs> uh, you know, fifteen twenty people will be inside of the plex, and half of them won't be on comms or anything. And then like somebody will yeah. punch in with like, you know, five ten guys and just start decimating people around them. Where you know like 
90 percent of the people are like just freaking out like ah, i don't know what to do here we're waiting uh, I, for somebody to come in on us. <laughs> I don't know how you're. I haven't really looked. Let me quickly pull up your Warzone map. Mm. Yeah, so it looks like your front lines are, you know, sp pretty, pretty spread out as well. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the Amar Warzone is, you know, it's more of a connected cluster. So we we actually have quite a lot of centers of gravity on the Warzone map, where people base out of from, and. Most people know each other in the war zone, and if they see you, they'll come for you, and you you end up in the same comps. We have multiple discords where we can find each other, so it, it we we usually are always on comps and talking to each other. But we also do a lot of solo PvP. Everyone by himself, just running around and not mass stacking plexus. So it really just comes down like yesterday we uh, we had a really long grind for Escher. We started uh, in the morning and we. Uh, we finished it this morning, uh, so yeah, that was a lo that was a long grind with a lot of effort of everybody, and we kept committing. So I, yeah, I mean we we seem to be uh, pretty well organized. But the same goes for Minmill; they seem to be well organized as well. If they ping, they get a full fleet pretty quickly. We do the same, and we we clash full fleet versus full fleet quite often. That's awesome. So tell us a little bit about why you're running for CSM. Uh, well, it's mostly because in the previous years I've seen that there's not, you know, it took a lot of years to get FW space to love that it deserved. And uh, I remember how it was when I started it out. It was pretty unforgiving and there wasn't a lot of information still. And it was all small groups running around the place. And now with the recent changes, it's, it's, it's more about working together. Uh, and I'm mostly just running to make sure that they keep balancing out the, the faction of warfare space, but also low sec for the pirates to make sure that it's, you know, still enjoyable for pirates because a lot of people that are pirates are still not liking the fact that we have all those small navy plexes because they can no longer bring their pirate and their tier 2 ships and I think with yeah, the last yeah. patch they actually did, did, did a pretty good change on that by increasing those, those advanced plexes yep. and actually yeah, giving them more than space. Than uh, mm -hmm. to PvP and I think it's a good thing because I'm also a pirate ship enjoyer Same. and I also uh, love to fly Treglavian ships and sometimes mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't have a medium advanced plex or a small advanced plex for like for like a solid hour in the system and I just wanted to grab out my Ishker, you know, just bring out my succubus but they were just docked and it kind of felt Eeky. felt just basic just you know you were always flying the same ship over and over and over because that's what worked and that's what fit and I think now that the advanced plexes have increased, also the diversity between the ships themselves has increased inside the plexus. So you know they're 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 good on the way, and the, and they keep changing things. And I just want to keep making sure that uh, that that stays that way, and that it doesn't change. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm excited that uh, it hasn't been a okay. We updated faction warfare. We're moving on type kind yeah. of thing because I mean they had that with like the epic arcs and like you know I mean a little bit of addition here and there that they did with the epic arcs but it felt like when they added epic arcs I thought that they were going to like just keep on pumping those out and give you tons of cool epic arcs and stuff they were talking about how it was easy for them to build that and yeah and, and you got one whole got epic dropped. arc you know wormholes yeah. got dropped and it was like okay well we, we made they added like what the shattered wormholes a little bit but in general, yeah. like, you know, wormholes haven't really been touched. Although I don't know if the wormhole community wants them to be touched, to be honest, at this point. I mean, so. they're just, they're, they're still good isk and they're still just, you know, a content highway. Yep. Yeah, Unless no. it's summer. So definitely, uh, so you're, you're advocating for, you know, faction warfare, pirates, low sex. So that's your, your target uh, voter that you're looking for is people who are interested more in the... Uh, your or, uh, low sec and uh, PvP and kind of aspect. Act yeah. aspect. Um, yeah. So, do you have? Uh, I saw that you have like good 0.0, .0 experience. So, are you advocating for anything? Any changes in 0.0, .0 at this point? Um, I, I, I would kind of hope is that you know we have the new contesting system for for systems in faction warfare, and I think nobody in this game likes the soft wars and how they work at the moment. I think nobody likes them, and I think maybe battlefields could 
be a nice introduction, introduce them into systems and have multiple battlefields. Obviously don't have the same restrictions that we have, but make that run up a system by running battlefields instead of by just sitting on a beacon with a soft link and waiting till it's fully cycled and then do that again and do that again. But instead take battlefields that, you know, do the same, but instead of having to orbit a beacon sit still, make it a slightly more sped up but fight for battlefields and also encourage more pvp and also make it easier for new people um, that want to try out that want to start out on nilsec alliance and there's some system that really no alliance cares about but they have it you know they can probably take it easier than that they're going to be forced to sit in one spot and orbit it because you're just going to get caught and easily shot and then that's that but if you're set up in a battlefield you know it could change the whole the whole way it, it works, but that's just my my personal view on it. Also, thank you, Samson, for a bunch of uh, subscription gifts that you gave out. I just wanted to. People. I just wanted to give your crew a little, <laughs> you know, a little incentive. <laughs> so a few subs, uh, gifted subs, for everybody out there in TV land. I mean, Twitch land, Eve land. So what are uh, some of the changes that you would like to see come to, is, is there any specific advocation that you're trying to do for any specific mechanic changes in Faction Warfare? Um, I think the mechanics that are currently in place, there's there's a few things. One has to do with the uh, loyalty point store. Um, currently you still require a lot of items that we cannot get by doing the things we do. And I think they should either include those items into the loot table of the NPCs we kill uh, so that we can actually get those items by doing the activities that we do in space. And also, in my opinion, the Faction of Warfare missions at the moment, they serve no purpose. So they either need to give them a purpose that they actually do something, like let's say give listening posts as a reward, because they're extremely hard to come by and you really only want to stack them up and use them for specific system pushes or just remove them in general because they have no added value to the faction of warfare as it is in the current state yeah i think i mean missions have always been a problem um in faction warfare and i think that the recent um not recent but the the, the overhaul the rework of faction warfare i think they did a good job of making it so they you know that they're irrelevant because one of the problems yeah. with it was is you'd get like, you know, what, three or four jackdaws together or whatever, you know, and uh, be 99% safe to just yeah. fly through space, get to your objective, go do it real quick. Once you're in the objective, yeah, there's a beacon in space, but the NPCs would shoot you, it, it, the, the enemy coming in and their allied NPCs shooting at them, um, you know, in PvP ships. Also, it's usually like they're what, like 100 kilometers off, so unless they're just like trying to get caught, like it was pretty easy to, to avoid any kind of PvP and just make an insane amount of isk, uh, especially when yeah. the tier levels were really high back in the day. So by cutting down on how much that they were actually worth, but you're right, they, they put them into a spot where it's completely useless now. Um, yeah. you, you don't. You know, there's no reason. I don't see anybody running. Um, also, your standings get smashed in missions. Like uh, yeah. that's that's. It's interesting how that change has actually brought it over. Where whenever anybody like comes onto the stream and asks about you know faction warfare, and they're like, "Hey, you know, how bad are my standings going to get hit?" It's like hardly at all. Like yeah. it's, it's only promotions that uh, that will get you deductions and it takes a long fucking time to be does, promoted yeah. by doing plexing now mission running that's then how you walk and you lose it yeah, <laughs> yeah what one time that you shoot uh you know, somebody in english uh, um yeah but yeah i agree that it would be i i don't know i don't know if missions need to be in faction warfare if it's unless they can find a way to add it to the the pvp content uh, yeah like they would give for certain rewards like those listening posts the propaganda beacons and stuff like that if that would be a way to obtain those items then i don't i i think that would be a good thing that would actually give an incentive to run those missions because you can get a consequent supply of those structures because right now i uh, i hunt them myself those listening posts and those propaganda beacons mm -hmm. and i've got 421 propaganda beacons and i've got 
nine listening posts at the moment. So, you know, I think... And it's already hard enough to reduce enemy advantage in the system, because, you know, you can just run those rendezvous points. You can get 6% in an hour. And I just think there isn't a proper way... You know, it, even if it takes effort, that's fine by me, but there's no proper way that you can actually consistently lower a system's advantage without having to wait three hours for those propagandas, uh, for, for those uh, supply caches to spawn and stuff like that. So I do think they need to to relook into that mechanic and perhaps, uh, you know, make it more more fun in a certain way, but also make it more available to actually use those structures in a bush. Because I think just 1% per 20 minutes is fine. And you can run free at the same time in the system, which is also fine. You can, so you can do 9% uh, an hour if you're actively running them, which is fine. But getting the structures itself is just so hard. Yeah, and they're not expensive really... if you purchase them. And they're them. expensive, yeah. yeah. So I don't really see the, the point sometimes of running them if the advantage in the system is 100% for each. Sometimes it's just better to not touch it and just keep it at 100% and not do anything else. But then again, it doesn't really give the modifier and also not really the incentive to do something about it to actually encourage a faster push. Yeah, and that's a important topic that has come up is what do you do once both sides have maxed out a system's advantage? You know, what uh, uh, What would you like to see this, the uh, CCP bring to the CSM as an idea to... Um, well, there, there's there's two things how I, how I look at it. There's one thing is where they... You know, right now a battlefield gives 15% advantage. I could see value in reducing it to it giving 7.5%, but it also removing 7.5% from your hostile faction. I so like that that. Even, even if you're both at 100%, you can reduce the enemy's advantage by 7.5% per battlefield. It's not huge, but you know, you got, you got 7.5, you remove 7.5. So even if it's 100%, you can still uh, reduce the enemy advantage that way and then you get an extra way of doing it which in the end is gonna make those battlefields more important for everyone which means you're gonna have to form for them and you're gonna have to take them and you just you can't just let them go it, unless you want to lose the system obviously then you just duck up and log off but, but that that's that that's what I think would be uh would be a good solution I like that that's pretty good um what do you feel about the uh in faction warfare right now, we have no real incentive to take space unless you want to live there. Um, so the side yeah. that has, um, and I don't think, I don't know if Amar and Mimitar are having this as big of an issue with this, but Galente and Kaldari, it definitely is very obvious that the Galente don't give a fuck about system ownership um, unless yeah. they're physically living there and they have assets that they, they want to have access to. Um, yeah. There's, there is a, I mean, there is, I take it back a little bit. There are some Galente that want to, to get involved in it, but there's just nothing incentivizing us to actually own a bunch of space. Um, the specific spots are like Fliet, Hadeelis, and even Hadeelis at this point, and Fliet, if they flip over to the enemy, we always have docking access. Yeah, that's, so we, that's something I actually have a problem with as well, with maintaining that permanent docking access. I, I You know, I can see the importance of always having a front line that you're not when somebody suddenly takes a whole war so that you're locked out that you, that you, you sorry everything's rear guard good luck you're just gonna have to plex one up very very slowly so i i, I can see that but you know we have quite a few systems because we had a, a corporation from the in the u.s times of the mr mill they were the first uh corporation to actually take a rear guard system flex it up to 100 percent and flip it which was Tody frown and they assaulted it from kaldari space and they took the entire pocket, and they could, the Kaldari system is still good. But the thing is, you have three systems in there that connect to a Minmatar high sec, so they will always remain frontline. So there's no real way to, you know, to secure a siege from a certain position, because they'll always have a frontline that will keep accessible for them. And I think they should maybe look in look into either reducing the amount of permanent front lines from those systems and maybe have like one or two from the main systems that you can just keep in mind and then you know that way actually allow you to keep a certain spot of space without them just being able to run into your back door and then just sit there for a few days and then oh shit it's 50% and I'm gonna have to sit there for four days 
and deplex all the opens and all the larges that spawn to just get it below a, an acceptable level again. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> interesting. Um, do you have any thoughts on um, owning lots of space? Do you think they should be like, uh, we had a suggestion that came from, uh, who was that? Uh, Iana? A I I A I N A. 187 said, uh, hot take. Now uh, there are front lines and uh, little rear guard bots, um, which actually is, uh, they took out the rear guard bots. I thought that update recently was really important. Um, yeah. That uh, you should not be getting shit for LP. I thought that they were, when they first released it, I thought they were going to make it like hardly anything for a rear guard. And they were like, it was it like 50% or something like that, reduction from normal. Um, yeah, but now it's like it's like nothing, basically. It's zero point zero one, I think. You, yeah, you there we go. Get, That's what it should have been since the you, beginning. You literally get twenty five LP or something, which which is just fine. But yeah, so uh, one one eight seven said that in rear guard or now that that's kind of taken care of, do you think they should bring back like the the tiers um, to incentivize owning more of the war zone, or is there any ideas that you have on what what? What should happen when you own eighty percent of the war zone? Is that it? So I, I think I think I think the tier system was was broken in the sense that yes, nice. Now I get a hundred KLP, let's say, but you know it's still worth the same as the forty KLP. But you're just getting a hundred K, so your wallet's filling up faster, so you can you know you can stack up. So I I don't think the the tier system itself would be a good thing, but I do think there is certain other things that they could introduce. Like they uh, they invented this amazing ship caster, and I think it the idea is the idea is great, but the execution is just you know there nobody builds them because there's just no point because nice you have us we 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 couldn't pick the system that the ship caster came in, which is okay but you know put it in a mar the capital, you know just just a thing uh, put the Mimitar one in hack their capital do the same for Kaldari do the same for Galante you know put them in their capital. And then allow them to depart from there, which is also going to make it easier for people that are new to the game, you know. Okay, nice, you're in a mar. You can just take the ship caster, pick one of the systems you want to go to, and poof, and you go. So, you know, perhaps uh, as a bonus of, <clears throat> of holding a lot of space is that you can select certain systems then to build a ship caster. And then if it the ship caster is in one of those systems it has increased defenses and instead of being able to be get it killed in like an hour you know make it like an asterisk you know give it give it a larger time just small but you know in that that way you actually have a bonus of having a rear guard system which you can place that in to improve your logistics and you know perhaps also an increased industrial bonus for those rear guards that you're holding so if you if they're no longer front lines but have, so that you can actually build up an industry hub in those systems and then you also have an incentive to defend those uh, those pockets and, 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 and an incentive to make it a backline uh, and so make it a backline yeah, yeah I mean, besides the, the advantage that it's harder to flex uh, yeah like but actually like if you're home like right now Nenemelia is you know uh, a home of the Kaldari, but it's a frontline system. They should have incentive yeah. to be like, I want this to be our home, but I want it to be a backline system. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So give it extra bonuses, like reduced uh, jump cloning fees. Because, you know, usually in an NPC station you pay 900. Well, let's say it's a rear guard. You pay like 100k. You know, because struck uh, Astrohuses and stuff, you know, they're a lot less useful now that you can't dock in them anymore in, in those rear guard systems, so you're mm -hmm. locked out. Which I think is really great. I think that was uh, a good change, actually. It, it yeah, pissed me off a little bit because I lived in Notorious, which, uh, you know, <laughs> before the patch, we were like, I remember. yeah, we live here forever. This will just yeah. be our fun little, uh, you know, the news is going on here. We got crazy stuff. And then when the patch came, it was like, okay, well, we're not consistently holding Nanamelia uh, as a, a Galente system, which was what we would need at the very least to hold Taurus, and uh, we were yeah. like, okay, well, we're going to move to Yvangir, never get kicked out of anything ever again. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, so uh, I think, you know, I think giving giving those extra little bonuses, they don't, you know, they're not huge, but 
you know, on the end that they do make the difference and they, they could be reasons why you would actually want to hold that system. And, you know, perhaps also an, an extra reward, but I'm just not sure, you know, uh, I'd have to think that through because it, it has to be balanced in a way that it's actually, you know, that it's balanced, that it's not out of balance because the tier system was just straight up out of balance. Nice. Well, yeah, it caused five. the pendulum swing and it was the, the, the pendulum swing of like, okay, the botters and the people farming this system for ISK, what they're doing is they go to one, boost it up, release, you know, so that you get like tier four, tier five, do that for a couple of months or whatever, save up an insane amount of LP, switch over to the other side, boost their side up, so now your LP actually is uh, harder to get. So yeah. now you, you can sell it at a much better isk to lp ratio but you know it took you know you just had to wait for that swing of that stuff it was all market manipulation was what controlled yeah, sure. the war zone um and, and now, now we and don't have that there, there's no incentive necessarily um but there is switching of systems that are happening still even though we're not incentivized necessarily through the uh tier system there is still fighting that is happening over systems and pushing and pulling and stuff like that i mean the keldari just came in and wiped out all the stuff that was behind um, Hadeelis, took Hadeelis for a little while. Um, we pushed them out, got all those systems back, and then we took like the northern section for a little while where their uh, ship caster, uh, or their, their special gate that they had. Um, yeah, you know, place. So there was there, there There's still fighting <clears throat> going on, but it's not, it's definitely not about this weird market mechanics. And, Anything that incentivizes, like you get more isk for or, or LP or whatever, you get uh, a bonus to your isk making ability on one side uh, that's winning is just going to force it so that you push that as hard as you can, and then you switch it over to the other side, you know, so that because then their items become less worth when you're, you know, dominating. Uh, yeah, or more and I think, worth more. I th whatever, and, yeah. and I think that's been been pretty well executed with this new patch because you know lp of course sometimes it goes down but i think it's pretty stable between 700 and 1.1k is per lp at the moment mm -hmm. yeah that's about that, right yeah, and i think that's a good good trade value uh yeah and that's and a lot of this for i mean the one thing is like a newbie 10 day old you know newbie in this game can come start running some novice plexes yeah. Um, or whatever they're called now. Uh, what are they called? Scouts. Yeah, the scouts. The scouts. Scout, yeah. um, you know, even a, a small, um, they can easily run those. They don't need that much crazy DPS. They can kind of maybe get some PvP in. But ISK wise, yeah. actually, um, as long as you know how to use the LP store, which a 10 day old does have a, probably the hardest time understanding what yeah. the fuck to do with their LP, um, yeah, there is sure. a suggestion from um, Yos. Uh, Yas, who said uh, it should be possible to buy blue loot with LP, so new players can easily convert LP to ISK without having to pay a lot of ISK up front. How do you feel it about is, changes to like the, the LP store? It is it, it, the suggestion that was just called for. That's that's something I've been you know thinking about myself as well. Uh, the thing is to prevent from just people using that as their main source of income, just buying blue loot and instantly selling it, so you have a fixed rate. Um, it should be a lower rate, but a convenience rate. So let's say four or five hundred k is per LP. So you don't have to worry about going through, but not so that people like me who can stack up like a uh, hundred million LP. Oh, nice! Now I can just sell it for one k is per LP as blue loot. And I just buy it all out and I sell it. Nice, now I have 100 billion. And I think that that has to be be guarded, but I, I think definitely, or maybe put a limit on it. You know, you can uh, sell X, you can buy X amount of blue loot a month. So let's say you can buy 1 billion of that blue loot each month so that a new player can, you know, consistently have 1 billion of income. And then, you know, it's, it's, it's also something that. If it would to, were to be introduced, it would probably have to be adjusted a few times to make sure it fits in with the market, and so that it doesn't destabilize it. That everybody uses it, and then suddenly blueprints go over 2k as LP, just because everybody's just buying the blue loot because it's easy. You don't have to find a buyer and a seller. Uh, so yeah, I think I think that's something you you have to be careful with. But I think definitely for new people, the LP store is still confusing for me. 
and I've been playing for a long time. And I, even I, when I opened the LP star, I was like, hmm, I want to get this Imperial Navy 400mm steel plate blueprint. And I'm like, the fuck, what is that? And then you're you're trying to work out half an hour whether it's actually worth buying those PPCs or if you're just better off buying the Imperial plates right off the market. Right, yeah, and trade in something else. And um, Yeah, and I, and I think a buy... simplifying of the the LP store is in order. Like, uh, like right yeah. now, there's a bunch of data... Because I feel like data cores are probably the closest to what we have to blue loot, quick exchange um, yeah, right yeah, now. The problem is is that there's like four or five of them, and, uh, you know, only one of them actually makes you a profit. The other yeah. will actually get you into the negative in the amount of money that you actually have to spend up front to get the... And so... That just is a confusing thing for any yeah. kind of newbie that they have to go out and do market research now on something. Um, no, I agree, and especially if you're ten days old, you you have no clue what the fuck you're doing. And I think in that case, in that in that you know the part um, in our corp, uh, we do buyback, and we have a few mm -hmm. guys that are actually actively buying up the LP, also from the new guys, uh, and it does make it a lot easier now. It has to be. There has to be trust, of course, because you have to donate it to uh, to, the, to the corp or, or to a specific corp. Mm -hmm. So it does involve trust. I think maybe for, to make buyback for corps easier and also for selling LP easier if you don't know what to do with it. I think it would also be a good thing if you could contract LP instead of donate it only. So that if you're a new bro and you have somebody that wants to just buy your LP and not, doesn't want to move but just maybe wants to invest in the LP, um, allow you to contract the LP to somebody so that you're not having to worry to worry about a guy yeah sure yeah I'll take your million LP you send it to him and then you just close the convo and well, the 10, new, 10 year uh, 10 day old guy suddenly has zero LP and no isk <laughs> awesome uh, S Samson uh, you got any questions that uh, burning for our CS M CSM see I said it CSM we don't have to drink. We haven't had to drink the whole show yet, I think. I was drinking anyway, uh, full disclosure, <laughs> <laughs> regardless. But that's just me. Um, yeah, so um, maybe you could uh, tell the listeners if there's anything you haven't covered already of why why they should vote for you as CSM. <laughs> I, I checked. You see, you got me making, you got me yeah. checking myself here. Well, I think the experience I've had over the the last 10, 10, 12 years that I've been playing this game, uh, all the experience I've done up in all the different kinds of space, I've lived in low sack, I've lived in nil sack, I've lived in wormholes, um, and I, I, you know, obviously I'm not perfect in 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 any way, but and I do think my experience can contribute to uh, you know, to make sure that the players are heard and represented in the right way, and. And I would hope that if if I was to be elected, that you know people would feel comfortable to approach me, you know, send me a message, explain their problem, and and see if we can do something about it. Sounds good. Um, and uh, you know what? Real quick, what's been your um, favorite PvP experience in Faction Warfare? I mean, I I, I do all kinds of dumb, crazy, fun stuff. I mean. From here and here and there, I just unduck a Varger with <laughs> land sills and just scream Leroy and go for it. <laughs> I fly ridiculously expensive ships that shouldn't shouldn't survive, but you know somehow they do. You get away on the edge, and you know it's th those kind of things that th th I find those the most fun. Uh, I also love solo PvP, but I also love uh, leading fleets and you know just clashing it out, 40 versus 40, 50 versus 50. And you know, make nice battle reports. Yesterday we we tried against pirates, didn't go so well. Six uh, six capitals ended up in the grinding machine of Big AB. Uh, so, so yeah, that wasn't that wasn't great. But you know, everybody had great fun. Those uh, those caps were sitting still in station, so those guys wanted to commit them. We dropped them, and you know, they had a great they had a great time. And in the end, it's 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 a video game, you know. So if everybody's had fun, then. Uh, then that, that could be worth a few caps. Agreed. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's the attitude that we need um, out there for sure. Is people willing to take risks, 
have fun, bring content to the game. So that's uh, and the sounds important like what part you're doing. Is the important part, we dropped them to kill the lift. The lift died. We hey. got received by 40 threats a second later, but you know, the lift died. So, up Mission success. Ac Mission accomplished. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, do you have like a specific uh, battle that you can that you can recall that just was uh, like just a wild I, wild ride it, that it, you could take us on for a minute? It, it, literally, the, the, the first battlefield. The first battlefield. The first battlefield spawned right after their patch. Nobody had a clue. What the fuck are we gonna do? We know we had run them on Sissy, so we knew how they kinda work, but we had no clue uh, whether anybody had actually prepared for it. We hadn't. So we literally just unducked something random. Everybody was in kitchen sink. We went into the first battlefield, and then we figured out that Mimitar had actually prepared a proper production for it. They had thought it through. We didn't, so we were just sitting there on their warping, a literal clusterfuck. Minmill slides in. We just got completely slaughtered. And I'm not gonna lie, it took us three weeks to to properly adjust to Minmill's tactics and actually get a doctrine that could you know could actually fight them. So I think that first battlefield was just complete and pure utter chaos and it was amazing. <laughs> and, a few, a few, and a few weeks later we adjusted, but you know, that, that first battlefield, that, that will always stick with me. So they just they just poured in and just uh, just started decimating everybody around them, I'm guessing, and uh, um, did you guys like stick around and like continue to fight, or was it just we, like... We, we, we tried, but we just got completely slaughtered. We saw D-Scan, we were like, we, we checked our D-Scan, okay, well, we got a nice fleet, we got some battleships, we got some battlecruisers, we got some Lodgy. We've got this, we got that, and then out of nowhere we saw, oh fuck, they're all in the same ship. Oh shit, they have 15 Lodgies. That is not good. We're gonna try it, but like I said, Ooh, we just. 15 Lodgy, that's, uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that doesn't work, you know, it's already a problem if you're in the proper doctrine, but it's a complete problem if you're actually in uh, in kitchen sink trying to do something. Doesn't oh, yeah. work. Well, Actually, that brings up a thought um, that I had, I've, I've, uh, and I haven't heard people bitching about it as much lately, but when the patch, uh, for, when the, the expansion came out, the faction worker got totally revamped, and Tech 2 Logi could no longer be used uh, reliably in faction yeah. warfare. Um, at first, people were really pissed off about that, because they were like, well, now how am I going to take my seven dudes and, you know, put two... Uh, to, you know, tech to Logi behind it and then, you know, go into a group of 10 guys or 100 guys or whatever, you know, and they're like, okay, well, now, you know, the, the, the overpowered tool that we had of T2 Logi is out. I find it really interesting, personally, that uh, I like that T1 Logi is being really heavily used. You can kill it, even when they have a large amount of T, as long as you have the alpha to, like, really just go through, barrel through yeah. and then switch targets you start doing a little bit of target switching and you can still yeah. overcome you know um, especially since they're t1 ships it's easy to blow them up so you know yeah. even with a lot of, of reps on them if you switch up targets you're going to be able to kill how do you feel about the uh the removal of t2 uh Lodgy ships from everything uh, I, I, I think the removal of tier 2 logic is, is a good thing you know because even if you're fighting it actually means that if you have the dps the logic will slow it down but you will still kill stuff so you actually be be, be be fighting over something and you'll lose ships as simple as that so there, you know this has to flow and I, I think that also you know makes it so that engagements are actually worth marks. nobody enjoys sliding into a into a battlefield oh they have 15 guardians we have 15 guardians we are in armor hacks they are in armor hacks we're just gonna sit here for the next 45 minutes and enjoy watching each other go to 50 percent armor and back up <laughs> and now actually in fights people die which which is which is a good change uh although i do think uh in the current meta the tier one shield logic has always been superior uh to the tier one armor logic because you know shield wraps apply instantly so a tier one shield logic ship will always be able to catch something and give them a slightly more longer life where tier one armor logi from what i've been seeing really struggles uh, to keep up uh, in that regard which is why also we currently are using a lot of shield doctrines um, 
to mitigate the fact that armor tier 1 large is just not really where it's supposed to be. You know, a guardian has the EHP to tank it, to, you know, to survive that gap between receiving reps and actually, you know, surviving. And yeah, I think that just currently lacks with the tier 1 logic and tier 1 ships. They just don't have the uh, the tank to actually survive the first 15, 15 seconds to, to get the first two rep cycles off from everybody and actually have the ship start catching reps, whereas the shield ship just heats its shield reps, clicks F1, poof, and shields back up to full. Uh, yeah. So I think in that, in that regard, tier 1 logic cruisers, you know, they might be something that needs to be looked at, maybe not. Um, but that that's why I would hope that at some point CCP will consider adding uh, faction logistical cruisers. That's what I was uh, thinking myself too. And, and maybe even uh, pirate logistic cruisers. I think the, the important part for the T1 Logi, if they make faction, is that they don't change it too much that they make T1 Logi completely obsolete. Because like you said, it's a good thing that T1 Logi is actually being used for something. Because nobody was really using them, because why would you? You could just bring a Guardian, or you could bring an Oneiros, or a Skimitar, or a Basilisk. But I think if they, you know, make them not too overpowered, but just slightly better than the Tier 1, but expensive enough that you have to consider, you know, am I going to bring Tier 1 for this smaller fleet, or am I going to bring the Navy variant, which is 60, 70, 80 million. So they actually have to consider, you know, is it worth bringing this Navy... You know, if you bring in battleships, you know, you, you can already guess it's worth bringing mm -hmm. into a if battlefield. You're in a small cruiser, Roman gang, you know. Yeah, do you really, it. are you really going to bring that to, to, to counteract whatever they're bringing? But I do you think it hydrate. would, you know, yeah, I, th I think it would add a nice, nice dynamic uh, to the war zone. And also, I think just more Navy ships in general, you know, maybe a new frigate, a new destroyer, a new cruiser new better cruiser just give it some unique bonuses you know change up the dynamic and you know don't uh you know just give us more options to play with because you know we are stuck mostly in the navy ships and you know x secure navy issue at the moment most of p cruiser at the moment i love my exec I, I do hope they will balance it out at some point and you know, they don't have to rebalance the exact navy. I think it's in a good place. I think it's where it's supposed to be. I do think that all the other uh, navy cruisers, in some regard, are, are lacking behind in stats. And I do think they also deserve a little love to, to you know, to put them back up to par with the exact navy. But that's also just my personal opinion. Yeah, no, I definitely see... As, as... The exec is really powerful, uh, although uh, the um, Osprey Navy issue is also a pretty solid spot right now for faction warfare, uh, frigate yeah. killing. Um, yes, you know, exactly. Around, be, be a fast frigate killer. Um, but, but yeah, um, I, I, in my opinion, the oh, Osprey Navy and the exec Navy, those two are, are really in a really good place right now. Because, you know, the Osprey Navy is really tanky and has pretty rapid DPS with those rapid lights. It can deal with frigates and destroyers quite nicely. And the exact Navy has slightly less tank, but you can just punch it in at zero and do a thousand DPS. Or you can sit at 40, 50 off, do 600, or you can even sit at 100 and do 300. So, you know, I think I think those two ships are in a really good place, but like we, we are Amar, we want to use our own ships, but why would you want that Konoma Navy issue? If you could unlock an exec navy issue, you know that's kind of funny. Actually, my alliance uses uh, Omen navy issues quite a bit. Actually, oh, okay, yeah, we we, <laughs> we, dislike, we dislike the sniper, them because yeah. their their cap is completely useless. You can, you, I've, I've seen yeah. uh, I've seen an incursus with with a uh, with a large uh, with a large blast that has better cap effectiveness than, than an Omen navy issue. <laughs> So, you know, and I think th that's where Amar struggles. And I think for for Mimitar, their Navy cruisers, they're they're really tanky. But, they're you know, they're also lagging, lagging behind in some regard. And, and the same goes for, for the, uh, not the Exec Navy, how's the other thing called? Um, Vexor. The Vexor Navy issue, they removed its, you know, those last two heavy drones, which I think it didn't deserve that they took those away. Because I think it actually gave you a reason to fly VNI, and I think now it's just 
an under DPS ship and it can't really fit great tank either. And for solo I PvP, seen them as much. Yeah. you don't know. Since they've removed it, you don't see them as much anymore because they just now you used to be able to push them to five, six hundred DPS quite nicely, and now you know you're kind of stuck at three sixty if you fit any kind of tank. So Nightflyer, uh, do you have anything, uh, any questions before we wrap things up? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I guess if you're on the CSM, uh, what would you like to see CCP bring in as far as quality of life issues with the, the game? Not just necessarily factual warfare, but game. <laughs> uh, quality of life, um, mostly, I think, PI. Is that something I've... I've never been able to get into it myself. I want to do it because you know it's used for a lot of the navy ships as well, and for all the new ships. But I just, I just burn out by the idea of setting it up. And uh, I also had the, this question asked before, and I do think it's important that the people that are really good at it, you know, that they keep an edge because they're really good at it. So we shouldn't just take away their livelihood because suddenly they're, you know, they're counted because you just have to click F1 and your PI set up but I that I think PI is something that needs to be really looked at and uh, make 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 it easier for people to set up and more understandable but don't take it away from uh, the people that really understand it and you know let them keep their livelihoods as well I think that's a really important one for me yeah PI definitely needs some massaging I do PI uh, quite often, I actually just revamped my whole setup, so um, yeah, I've got a whole list of notes on things on that. But what about something like uh, character name changes? Would that be something that you would support? And if so, what uh, caveats would you like to see with that? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't. Yeah, I think it's a hard one because you know every character in Eve. Once it's created, it lives through its own journey. And, you know, people remember that name. And I think that if you start allowing people to start changing their names, um, it, it takes away the, the character out of the character, you know? So once a character is created, it's, it's got its own journey, you know, it's got its own history. And I think by changing the name, you... you 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 slice into that history and and I think that's something in Eve that is really important for a lot of people. So I think I think it's not something I, I would directly support. I think you know once a name is character is created, unless accidental, you're one day old. Sorry CCP, I fucked up my name, but I've already uh, injected my one million SP. Okay, you know you should be allowed to change your name. But you know I think for for a veteran after all those years of playing with a character, I don't I don't think it's for the good being able to change your name because you know your character has a history and I think that history sh should stay with the name but that's just my my personal opinion uh, and okay so the the big one that always comes up too is cat ears are you for or against cat ears I mean I, I customization is not something I'm really busy with myself but if somebody wants cat ears you know give them cat ears cat ears yeah if they want cat ears, ears? If yeah, CSP want wants to make money, you know, let, let them make money, yeah. you know, like, let people, buy cat ears. Sell, sell cat ears, you know, that's, that's fine by me. Yeah, I'm cool with it on characters, I don't want to see it on ships. Um, no. I think it becomes too cartoony. <laughs> no, that's point. silly. That's silly. The game, so. Yeah, look at my Logo's extra navy fine. with two massive cat ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, I mean, if people want cat ears on the character, that's all good, but, like you said, let's not put them on ships. All right, so uh, Twan, is there any place else that uh, people can get in touch with you? Or are you going to be on any other shows? Um, uh, people uh, can find me yeah. on the uh, Amar Militia Discord. It's, it's where you're most easily going to be able to reach me. And, you know, if you're uh, really desperate, come out to the Amar War Zone and, and, and find me. <laughs> I'm always uh, flying every day, so it shouldn't be too hard finding me. We should do a roam like that someday, uh, Frozen. So with, uh, yeah, I put agree. a download roam out into the. Into yeah, we can, yeah, we've been we, out we, there. We yeah. can just set up. We can also set up a fun engagement if you guys are up for it. I mean, uh, 
we'll, we'll try not to blob you guys with uh, with tier two ships. <laughs> I'm thinking we do a team up and we just take the system over. So that's, that, we could also work together and just murder Minmill. There we go. <laughs> now that's a possibility. I mean, I mean Gwen I'm, is I'm okay. technically a Mar, so there we go. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I always say the same with Minmithar. Technically, there are Mar ships because we own Minmithar, so you know. Air attack is our attack. No shame in flying Minmithar ships as a Mar. We do it all the time. We we fly hurricanes and we fly ruptures. They're just more rusty. Yeah, exactly. Just gotta wipe it off sometimes. Maybe put some paint <laughs> thinner on it. <laughs> um, and uh, before we wrap things on up here, I always like to give a little bit of a spotlight for you if you want to talk about any upcoming projects, uh, any anything that uh, if you've got a YouTube or you've got any kind of media presence out there, or if there's any shout outs that you want to give to anybody that... Uh, yeah, so I, I actually, I used to have a YouTube channel, but I haven't really been active that much because I've just been, when I'm online, I'm usually just focused on PvPing and running fleets, so I don't really take the time anymore really for, for social media in that regard. I just usually uh, focus up on, uh, on blowing shit up and having fun. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah, that, that's pretty much how I do it. And I think, yeah, there's there's some other uh, Faction of Warfare candidates out there. Um, if you don't like me, that's fine, you know? Maybe uh, maybe go out there, consider one of the other Faction of Warfare candidates. I think in general it's just really important that we get at least one, preferably two people on CSM that, you know, that, that keep Faction of Warfare in mind. So that we make sure we don't end up on the backlog again, and then maybe we get another big update in, in another 10 years. Yeah, we definitely need the representation. I know, uh, uh, oh God, I just had her name in my head too. Uh, it didn't even run this year, so I know she had another, uh, or Sonia, is that her name? Uh, could be. Yeah, she was the Faction Warfare one for the last, like, two yeah, years. Yeah, we definitely but... need an advocate on this side, uh, for yeah. sure. And, uh, and obviously, with all the changes that just happened. At, at, I mean, I'm not sure whether you guys uh, knew, but when we were sieging for Aga, we were actually the busiest... Aga was the busiest system in E for like a solid two months. I heard we about had that, yep. We, we, had, we had more than 14 to 3,000 ships die a day. It was just a constant slaughter fest of cruisers versus cruisers, battle cruisers versus battle cruisers. I mean, it was not a system in EVE where there was more ships dying than, than there was in AGA. So I think, you know, keeping that in consideration, I think I think it's important that we, we keep good representation so, you know, we can keep that up and we can actually keep Faction of Warfare alive and, you know, keep getting new people into it and that way make it a, an important place in space and not just, you know, you can pick between Wormholes, Nullsack or Highsack, but actually, you know, give Losek the importance it deserves and, and make sure it's in fun fun to fly around in. Yeah, I think CSM's always had enough uh, representation as far as uh, you know the null blocks and that stuff goes. Even high sec I think has had probably more than low sec and faction warfare. Yeah. So uh, we definitely need candidates that can voice, you know, our opinions and their opinions and respond to the, the requests or questions. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, we'll go ahead and wrap things on up here. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for watching. And thank you, Tuan. Thank you so much for coming on to the show here. Really good to hear that we've got a solid uh, uh, faction warfare supporter that is uh, running. And I definitely, uh, you got my vote for sure. Well, that's good to hear. And, uh, and I Same. hope anybody watching uh, is convinced to, uh, to vote on me as well. And uh, we'll we'll find out soon enough uh, how it goes. Oh, are you gonna be in Iceland or no? Are you gonna make it to the event? I, I I was I, I I had the tickets. I was I was gonna go, and then uh, last year my son was born and uh, oh, bought a house. Good. That changes things. That's a good yeah. reason, I guess. So yeah. uh, I I've ended up you know deciding not to go because uh, he's currently currently uh, 13 months old so you know taking him out to Iceland or going out for a few days uh, oh, you know okay. yeah. I, now I, they're high I, maintenance I, at that age so. yeah <laughs> so I've, I've decided to uh, 
to watch it again from home this year and, uh, and not go out. I still plan to go some point because every time I was last time I planned to go, uh, COVID broke out. So <laughs> every time I try to go, something comes up. So you know, wow. uh, I want to make it next time, but you know, perhaps something will come up. But I, I do hope Hello. to make it next year. We'll drink uh, an extra uh, beverage for you, alcoholic beverage, while we're there. <laughs> uh, I, will do, I will do the same, but from the couch, watching the live streams. <laughs> there you go. All right, make sure you check out our stream. We're going to be doing some live broadcasts from that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, we'll be live streaming there. And, 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 and I'll try to, like, photobomb any um, actual things that get kicked out. <laughs> yeah, so, sounds good. You guys, uh, I, I just noticed that I haven't I hadn't even followed you guys once the stream started. So I, uh, I've so gone ahead okay. and done that now. Uh, oh, we forgive man. you. Oh, we thank forgive you. you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, awesome. th thanks for having me. Yeah, it was so, great. This is, a, this is a solid interview, and uh, we'll see you out in space. Yeah, sounds good. Fly reckless, everyone. Absolutely. Thanks, Juan. Yep, yep. That's a long time since I've been.